Hello, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and welcome to this demonstration how to edit your photos using DxO Photolab, in this case Photolab 6 Elite Edition. So we're going to begin with this photograph here and if we have a look this is what it looked like before we started and this is roughly what our final edit is going to look like. So we're going to begin, we're going to reset my edit and now we're back to the in-camera raw version of this image, rather flat and lifeless. Now, the easiest way to edit your photographs with Photolab 6 is to apply a preset. And if we click here on the top right-hand corner, it takes us to the preset uh, sort of library. And there is absolutely loads of them, from sort of standard presets to film simulations, such as Fuji Serpia, Velvia, Kodak, Polaroid, Lamography, uh, wet plate, all kinds of different things, something for everybody. So if you are looking for the easiest route to an edit, or at least a very good head start, I strongly recommend you have a browse through the presets. But in this case, we're going to do our very own edit. So once again, we've reset our image back to the start. And I'm going to begin here on the light tab. Now, the big problem with this photograph is we can see that overall it's quite dark. And that is reflected on our histogram here. We can see that most of the image is at the darker portion of the image. And as the image gets lighter, we can see there's fewer and fewer pixels. So I'm going to boost, boost the exposure by clicking on the exposure icon here, sorry, the slider. And I'm going to drag it towards... The right and as I do you can see two things the image is getting brighter but also that histogram is moving ever forward and really that's the sort of thing we want we want a sort of even distribution of pixels a mountain rather than a sort of cliff edge so already our giraffe is looking a little bit better we can see it's brighter, but having increased the brightness, we've also dinged the contrast. You can see that it's pretty flat looking. So we're going to do a tone curve. Now, if you're new to tone curves, the best option to do is what we call an S curve. So we're going to place three dots, one right in the middle, one middle top, and one towards the bottom. And then each of these dots represent the top one is highlights, mid-tones, and shadows. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull our shadows down. That's going to make our blacks darker. So we want to do it to a respectable degree. We're going to lift the mid-tones in this case, I think. And I'm going to increase the brightness of the highlights ever so often, uh, ever so little, I should say. And you may want to just fiddle this around until you get exactly what you want. And every now and again, hit compare just to refresh the eye and see how far we have come. Now, because this is YouTube, I am over processing this a little bit. So I'm going to leave that as is and move on to the next step. Go into the color option and I'm going to play it with this HSL color wheel. Now, the other thing I'm not so fond of this photograph is that the giraffe looks great, but there's quite a lot of greenery in the background, kind of stealing the presence of the giraffe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these greens and subdue them somewhat. So to do that, I'm going to click on this eyedropper. And I'm going to click on a sample of the color I wish to alter. So I'm going to click on this greenery right here. Mm -hmm. Now you can see it's changed the hue and selected the hue of that color. And I am going to just narrow that down. I want rid of the orange. And now I'm going to alter the saturation of my selection. If I drag it all the way to the left, you'll see that the background is effectively, for the most part, black and white. If I drag it all the way to the right, dial saturation to 10 or 100 in this case you can see we're getting the opposite effect. Now, which is right, it depends on you and your tests, but I'm gonna go for something quite desaturated. And once again, if we compare our image, we can see it's not exactly night and day, 
but it is just enough to sort of subdue the background and by doing so we're giving the giraffe a little bit more pop and adding a bit of depth to our photograph. Next, always worth doing a little bit of sharpening. So to this point, we want to zoom right into our image and you can do that by one to one, which will zoom our image to 100%. Now this is actually quite a sharp image already. It's not bad at all, but I'm going to make it a little bit sharper too. And I really like the lens sharpness option in DxO Photolab 6. And I'm just going to do a bit of global sharpening until I get something that looks roughly pleasing. If you're planning on printing, it is well worth going a little bit overboard, but just a little bit. I've also increased a little bit of the unsharp mask as well. So once again, let's have a look at our different image. Here's our original, lifeless, not very sharp. And this is where we are now, extremely punchy, perhaps too punchy, but this is a demonstration. Now I am going to go to geometry and I'm going to zoom this back out so I can see the whole image on the screen using this cross option. I'm going to click on crop and there's just a bit too much background here. You might not think so. That's okay. But I'm going to make this picture all about our giraffe friend here. And then I'm going to click on the crop option again. And we can see now the giraffe is more the start of the show. Next, we're going to go to local adjustment because we actually have a little bit of a problem with this photo to fix. So under here, local adjustments, I'm clicking local adjustments. I'm clicking the local adjustments tool. And our problem to deal with is the eye. So let's zoom in one to one again. That's one pixel to one pixel on screen. And what I want to do is this kind of looks like just a black ball. I want to brighten this up so we can see a little bit of that detail within the giraffe's eye. Now, if we on the local adjustment tool, we can right click and that gives us all kinds of options. We've got like an eraser, we've got graduated filters to sort of simulate ND grads. We can do control lines, which will help contain our adjustments. But in this case, I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to go up for the auto mask. And then I'm going to paint in the area that I wish to affect. Now I'm not going to do a perfect job because you guys are going to get really bored watching that. And the other confusing thing which took me ages to work out is that while the mask is not edge aware in that it's bleeding up everywhere that I paint, the effect of my adjustment is uh, edge aware. So as I boost the exposure, it's going to be limited to the boundaries of the eye. As I say, this is a quick attack on this. But even so, it should be enough just to give the eye a little bit of definition which would be nice. Yeah, that's much better. So just to remind you what it looked like before, if we go back to compare and we can see, just give it a minute to render. We can see what the eye looked like before. We can see what it looked like now. We can also check the masks direct effect by disabling the mask and what it looks like now. And there we go. So we can just see just enough to make it not look like sort of a solid black mass. Finally, we're going to go to watermark and effects. Now this stuff is entirely optional. Uh, one thing I always enjoy doing is a little bit of creative vignetting. So basically that converts my expensive lens into a cheap lens, ironically enough. But in practical terms, what it does is it, it adds to that sort of 3D punch Again, by de-emphasizing the background, we emphasize our foreground, in this case, our giraffe. So let's take that to the extreme. You can kind of see why that would be. I mean, obviously that's too much. We want to be discreet. And we also want to make the vignette effect central to the giraffe rather than to the frame. So to do that, we're going to use this option here, set center point. 
and I'm going to move that center point away from center frame to more or less center giraffe. Now I'm going to make this vignette effect very discreet to the effect that you can't actually, you can observe it, but you can't see it, if you know what I mean by that. And perhaps the final thing we could do, if we just want to, we can add a filter. So in this case, we've got cool tone on, which isn't really the style I'm looking for. But what we can do is we can search through these different options. And given that sort of dark orange is a, a reoccurring theme in this photo with the giraffe and all, let's try the dark orange theme uh, filter. Kind of looks cool, but I'm going to remove the density and I'm going to take it down to nearly nothing. Just enough to give us a, a bit of golden glow. And it'll just make the picture look a bit warmer. And to an effect, you can do this with the white balance adjustment. I'm just happened to be doing it with the dark orange filter. And there we have our picture of a giraffe. Now let's have a look what it used to look like. So before it looked like this, flat, lifeless, good photo, but you know, a bit dull. And now we've got a lot more punch a lot more brightness where we need the brightness and a lot less of it where we don't. And side by side, here we go, here's the difference. Now the adjustments that I've applied to this giraffe, I've kept them pretty generic because you can pretty much apply these adjustments to any photo from landscapes to portraits and indeed to giraffes, perhaps with the exception to the dark orange filter. But in terms of boosting exposure, altering the tone curve with an S curve, uh, adding vignettes, adjusting colors and saturations of the background. It tends to work for almost any photo. So try my steps, try these steps with your own photos and I'm sure you will get decent results. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. My name is Richard from Silent Pig and I wish you a really great day. Bye-bye.